So I had a sort of wish list and I'm nearly at the end of it. So I'm not, not looking to hook up with random strangers. No, that's another program altogether, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> program entirely. Everybody I know who lives near in striking distance, I've nearly done them all. <laughs> Welcome to Own It, your business and your life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. I can now I was just swapping back to our own internet okay <sighs> the, we've had a lot of um, storms this week and storms for some reason I don't quite know how interrupt the internet even when you're on super fast broadband I don't understand how it works but there you go it does it obviously comes through the air somehow and look at your lovely picture it's of England I know how funny is that <laughs> well we very rarely have pictures on um, momentum do we of yeah. England yeah that's right there's a nice cloud haze so and you'll realise you'll realise I'm calling it England for a very specific purpose. Yes, I imagine it's something to do with the football. It is to do with the World Cup because <laughs> somehow in the World Cup, England becomes England. I think it's so that it scans in in football chant slash poems. Yeah, absolutely right. Yes, I think so. As I'm, you know, obviously learning about poem, it's something Quite. about the meter of the whole thing. Quite. <laughs> so, how's your week been then? Well, I thought I would start. <laughs> I want you to pretend to be interested in this first bit, even if you're not. Okay. I then. thought I would start oh, by no. telling you or reminding you, and of course this will be irrelevant by the time the podcast goes out, but today, and it's only 9.30 in the morning in England, is um, um, the summer solstice, the longest day. And where I'm nomading currently quite now is very close to Stonehenge. And you know that Stonehenge is full of nutty druids and hippie, hippies on the, uh, at the dawn, the sunrise on the solstice day. So there's not only a lot of woo-woo energy flying around in my immediate locale, but that if I'd thought about it, I would have cancelled, postponed you and, and the lady before you this morning, which was a, a, a call to New Zealand, to, um, so that I could have gone there and hung out with the weirdos and seen the sunrise at, at Stonehenge, I think. But, but the mathematician in me wants to tell you this. That in England today, the sunrise is at 04.58, which is just before five o'clock in the morning, and the sunset will be 21.29, just before 9.30 at night. So we've got 16 and a half hours of daylight today. And you'd be disappointed if I didn't have the facts and figures for stupor as well, wouldn't you? Sure, Nick. <laughs> your sunrise was at 06.12 and your sunset at 20.53. So you've got nearly... 14 and a half hours you've got two hours shorter daylight that your longest day is two hours shorter than mine that's because we're nearer the equator presumably. indeed and um i was speaking to new zealand this morning where of course it's not the summer solstice it's their whatever the they're excited because they're that's their shortest day today which means they can look upwards towards the light whereas i know it's a long way away yet but i have to start preparing for the days getting shorter and darker yes in fact we were only saying the other night weren't we sir how light it was still in the evening Yes. Yeah. Well, you can expect it to be light until 2053, uh, slightly after 10 to 9 tonight. Oh, very nice. Yes. Anything else about your week? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, right. Yes, that was just a warm-up. Now, oh, hang on. Okay. I need to make your screen smaller so that I can see my notes. Uh, yes. So, I've done another weirdo visit this week. Um, but I'm quite pleased that I've added to my quota of now two what I'm calling posh pubs in pretty villages so I've got two posh pubs in pretty villages that I can go to meet people rather than sort of naff take your life in your hands not quite sure what it's going to be like places if you know no. what I mean and the one I did last Friday was the meeting with my longest ever client she was my client in the money gym my client in the creation experiment my client in club 100 so the three coaching things I've been involved with for the last I don't know 10 years, she's been a client in each of them. She's been a client for 10 years, no signs of stopping being a client. 
Um, and so we had a, a long leisurely lunch, which was remarked upon by everybody else in the pub, as though that was a strange thing to be doing. It didn't strike either of us as in the least bit strange to start at one o'clock and stop at half past four. But anyway, um, I'm running out of people now. I'm going to have to start going round again with Henry and the cousins. Um, and the other observation about this week and all the driving about is I'm, I'm living in Somerset, but actually it's Wiltshire that is fast becoming my favourite county. Oh, OK. So you're getting a, a preference is emerging. Well, um, I like a lot of different, it's a bit like when I lived in London, I liked all different bits of London for all different reasons, but um, whenever I cross the border into Wiltshire, which I do quite quickly whenever I get in the car here, I kind of go, oh, it's nice here. <laughs> um, and each discovery brings forward a nice new bit, and it's quite a big county, and so actually when people are listening, if they know Wiltshire, they won't necessarily be thinking of the same thing or feeling the same vibe as I get from my southern bits of Wiltshire, if you know what I mean. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Mm. But anyway, my, my week has been about the longest day and sunshine and posh pubs and pretty villages. So are you, um, instead of going around, well, obviously you can go around again as well, are you now looking for new people? Who no, I'm not. No, I've got one person still on the list, um, but we're coming up to the end of term and I'm not sure we'll be able to squeeze each other in before her little people break up but we'll, yeah. we'll have a go so I had a sort of wish list and I'm nearly at the end of it so I'm not not looking to hook up with random strangers no that's another program <laughs> altogether isn't it yeah program entirely. everybody I know who lives near in striking distance I've nearly done them all uh, but you, you the criteria was that you had to have known of them before well apart from the one Facebook friend who I just imposed yeah. myself on everybody else was like oh I'm so much nearer to all these people now why don't I go and see them because when you're in London that's it's a bit of a schlep to go anywhere especially since most people come up to London sooner or later. Yeah, good point. But there are a lot of people down here who obviously felt quite a long way away and would never have considered coming to London, the cousins mainly. Yeah. Um, but uh, so it was rude not to, as my brother would say, when you're, you know, very near. But, and this client from last Friday, she used to live in London as well. And we were 20 miles each. So 40 miles away from each other. She, I only had to drive 20. She only had to drive 20. That was faster than it would have taken us in London. I was going to say, it's a lot easier to drive to it. Yeah, well. and we ended up in a posh pub in a pretty village. So, you know, who's complaining? PPPVs. Quite. And I don't think we want posh pubs in pretty villages except when it's the summer, to be honest. Okay. Um, I'm not a roaring fire type of a girl, as Ooh, you know. I love a nice roaring fire, me. No. Yeah. No, I don't. It denotes winter. Tell me about your week. Well, it's been a very um, challenging week, really. Uh, I've had to, I, I've had to meditate quite a lot. Oh. <laughs> you you mentioning? Um, no, I, I very rarely have down weeks. I'm not a very moody person, but I have been feeling especially moody this week. And um, mentioning the solstice, it's it's actually quite poignant for me because that's actually my wedding anniversary, or would have been my wedding anniversary if um, the wedding had, uh, the marriage had lasted. But. I feel, you know, it was the right thing to do. So I don't ever feel that I did the wrong thing. But um, Can but I just it, say it lasted a reasonable amount of time and you got two cracking results out of it and oh, you still have a nice relationship with your ex? Yeah, absolutely, I know. But you still have a little bit of twinge of poignancy. Of, okay. you know, what, you know. So there you go. So I just have a usual yeah. twinge of po poignancy. Steve used to slap it at me. Not literally, but he used yep. to say, you know, he yep. used to verbally um, tell me all the reasons why it was, a, it, you know, I'd made the right decision. and. Um, yeah. And everything, and I'm sure everything feels the same now. So you, yes. you can't help remembering, though, can you? That lovely party we had, particularly. Yes. And whatever happened to my tiara? Because it got lost in the, in translation. I don't know on, on that day, did it? No. Well, mm, yes, I think it did. Actually, it might have got lost in the move when we moved to Sussex. But Maybe. I wouldn't like to have given that to me. But never mind. It wasn't. It wasn't an especially valuable one or anything. <laughs> It's interesting, isn't it, how, how symbols of things that are important to us at one stage in our life somehow just fall by the wayside at other stages in our lives. Yeah. I mean, I've also been wrangling with the um, what, what to do next thing, because I know that, um, and, and I'm not changing what I'm doing next, but uh, two clients who signed up for three months on the, the done for you service came to an end recently and we've been reviewing one has um, it was very amicable and they've moved on to a different business model entirely and they're going to come back when they've got that settled because they're also moving from one part of India to another part of India um, with the husband's work so she wants to um, refocus her business in a different direction slightly and come back to me when she's done that the other one is is ending amicably but I sense there was a little bit of disappointment um, on one side because 
and Sarah and I have been talking about it. And, you know, because I went out for the last thing Jeremy did were Kim and Jeremy, my friends who were here, he picked my brains for an hour in, in a taverna. He said, you know, he said, I can't go without, you know, taking advantage of the fact that you're here. And he was trying to come up to speed so that when he has, because he's a very, you know, powerful guy in, in his business he does he said I can't we're having these meetings about internet marketing I know I need to come up to speed on it he said but he said as you know as people famously say uh, the, the one-eyed man is king in in the land of the blind mm. and I feel like I need to be the one-eyed man because all of my people around me I can see that they don't really know what they're talking about and then consultancies come in and they're they're looking to sell us high very high price packages so I just wondered if you know if I could buy you a drink and you could t- give me an hour of your time just to bring me up to speed on, on how it all works so he was looking for a flash briefing if you like and um, I've sent him yeah. some resources afterwards and I came out of that thinking oh my god I know so much about this stuff yeah so why is it so difficult to find a business model that works for me and for the clients. So then I was sort of spent a couple of days thinking, oh, I'm just going back to doing consultancy outside Clicks and Leads Academy because I, I like consultancy because, you know, you sort of tell, you, you have a good helicopter overview, you've got a good long distance view of someone's business, you can put together a plan, a strategy, then it's up to them to implement it either, you know, with their own team or with a, um, a consultancy. And I was trying to think who I would send Jeremy to. And there really only is two people in the world that I would send him to. Um, one is based in England, luckily, and not far from him. And one is based in Australia and is a lot more specialist. And I just thought this is so frustrating because I really want to come up with a, a business model where clients like that, I don't have to send them outside, but I don't end up feeling, it's the whole thing of feeling totally responsible for someone's results again. And it's impossible to, do, to be responsible for someone's results when they're the ones who are converting the traffic and the leads into sales. And then I was feeling very frustrated with that this week, very frustrated that I couldn't work a business model out. Um, And I was just, you know, I was just frustrated and pissed off, as you can hear in my voice probably. And then, and then something happened to a friend of ours. They, they're quite elderly and and they fell over. He, He toppled over and she, she went with him trying to catch him. And, um, everyone's been busy you know rustling around this week so delivering food and tonight my you know I rang up and I offered to come around and cook dinner uh to see if she was well enough for company and she is because uh they think she might have cracked a rib and so they don't cook so everyone's rustling around delivering food and as soon as I offered to do that I started to feel a bit better because it takes the focus outside again doesn't it it takes the focus outside you yeah and uh so yeah and then and then I was that sort of lightened my mood a bit, that looking forward to that because we're going to watch a movie as well. And then I had a little bit of a sort of breakthrough, again, after a meditation, Judith, you see, this Yay. meditation stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a bit of a breakthrough on, on that, and I came back upstairs and said, Sarah, okay, we're going again, but this is how we're doing it this time. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, if it's any consolation, I feel exactly the same as you, that I know so much, and yet it is really difficult to persuade people to become clients and take responsibility for their results. Yeah. I, I, what I'm, by, by which I mean, not the current clients that I have. No. Um, and, and interestingly, I'm going to talk in what's fueled your fire about finishing up with clients as well, but um, not in enough quantity. You know, I could handle three times as many as I've got at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a marketing issue for us, but. Well, but, I, I, yes, it is, but we've birched ourselves with that for so long. I don't think it, I don't, unlike you, I don't think it's that there's something wrong with me or my marketing. Uh, I think it's other factors as well. But I think it's a, you know, people with your expertise and mine should be coining it in. Well, we should at the moment because, you know, everybody, every business on the planet needs what we know. Well, and also that conversation that you had with Jeremy is the things my brother was asking me three years ago because he's got his, his team were doing things that he didn't understand. What did I think about how this person had behaved on Twitter, you know, that was a member of his team? You know, should there be rules in their business about how you tweet as a human being versus how you tweet as a member of the staff? You know what I mean? We know a lot of valuable stuff. Um, Oh, let's leave it at that. We know well, a lot of I think I've, stuff. I've got, I, I th- I, you'll love, I think we should talk about this in a focus of the week. Okay. So what's fueled your fire this week then? Uh, well, exactly what you've just said. I finished up with two clients this week. One business client uh, that I've done this morning 
and one low-carb client. I'll tell you about the low-carb client in a minute. But it's a happy, sad day, isn't it? My client that I finished up with, I'm sad because she did a year in small business big magic then a year in club 100 we've achieved fantastic results together we were still discussing some of the issues we were on day one but you know she's closer to them than she's ever been but there have been so many other wins along the way and the reason I know that is because she asked me to do something I don't generally do but which I know coaches do do which is she asked me for an end of term report so last night I sat there writing some notes about it. And when I fed it back to her this morning, it was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, what we achieve in two years, what is it they say that we we underestimate? What's that quote? We underestimate what we, we overestimate what we can achieve in a year and we underestimate what we can achieve in 10. Yeah, it's like the, the short distance. We, we overestimate what we can do in a short period of time, but underestimate what we can do in a long yeah, period of time. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. So she was gobsmacked to be reminded of sort of seismic shifts which have made her life and her business better in, in every way. So it's happy because we're – that's sad. You know, it's a, it's a, it, what's the word? Bittersweet. Anyway, the low-carb lady, which was only um, – uh, three months and that was how it was designed to be and she's going to make me a video testimonial so soon I'll, soon I'll be able to share it and that'll be fun but she described it as life-changing in a way that I totally understand and there's a, a writer called Janine Roth who writes on this as well because she makes the connection between food and addiction and work and money and that they're all related and interrelated so her wins are beyond just low carb and that's made it very gratifying yeah yeah I, I do agree, by the way, that it's all you know. Self, it's all about self-esteem, isn't it? At the end of the day, what what fascinates yes. me is how we all grow up with different parents, but everyone ends up with low self-esteem. It must be a human condition of some kind. Well, and I think it'll be different for for later generations than us because I think it is. Um, I think it's cultural and of its time so your mother and my mother were of a similar age even though we're seven or eight years apart but they've been brought up with the same influences and the values you know were things that are not valued anymore so for instance um as i said the other day about david Badil, children were ignored in my era now they're over pampered if anything yeah, it, yeah. it swings back and forth so we don't know yet what the damage will be to future generations of the parenting that's going on now it, it might not be self-esteem it might be something else i think we're the reason we say it's self-esteem is because we're looking at a generation that had similar sorts of values around parenting yeah. Um, which was particularly for girls, you know, don't draw attention to yourself. Don't be a, a big, don't be a big show off. Yeah. Um, all sorts of things like that, which kept us small and which is still going on to a certain extent. So yeah, actually it's not so much, low, low self-esteem is a good catch-all, but it's much more specific than that. Yeah, I do tend to agree actually, yes. T tell me about what's fueled your fire. Well, I was scraping around for something on this one. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. Sometimes I do as well. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, what's fueled by fire this week has been, um, I've been doing lots and lots of video because I was talking to uh, uh, my mentor about how to up, up level my traffic, basically, without spending too much more money. And he said, just do more of everything. He said, you know, you're doing great. And I, and I sort of felt quite, oh, about that. But then something came along this morning that, that fired me up a bit, um, which is IGTV. So Instagram, you you shared a thing about it. You're right on. I, my, did. I yeah. did. I did. I was, I was yeah. like, oh, she's got there quick. Well, um, it, was on the, it was on the BBC News app yesterday. Yeah. Well, they're sharing uh, Instagram TV is, is launching and it's interesting because it's going to be an entirely vertical video format whereas we've all been making our videos horizontal because that's what you know it's easier to watch but so I'm, I'm intrigued by this but you can do is it, it because they expect you to watch it on their phone and people hold their phone vertically yeah. yes yeah. exactly I always turn my phone sideways but there you go because um, it makes it bigger but that's a, a that's because you're an old lady with, <laughs> with failing eyesight Exactly. So, um, so immediately I realised that luckily all the stuff I do, like the V-zine and the um, masterclass tips I've been doing recently, they all are, I'm standing in the middle of the screen, so there's no reason why they can't just be repurposed for Instagram video, which will give me a really good head start on a brand new platform, which it always fires me up. I love that idea. So, and, and let's just say to everybody who doesn't know what this means is that historically you've only been able to make them 60 seconds long, but now you're going to be able to make them 60 minutes long. Isn't that right? Up to 60 minutes on Instagram. 
Instagram, yeah. And Instagram yeah. is rapidly becoming the platform of choice for the younger people. It's Facebook mm. is for older people and Instagram's for younger people. And basically, yeah. apart from YouTube, everything else is falling away. But video is yeah. the way to go. So that's, you know, obviously, Judith, you you know, you, do, you make your own little Lumen 5 videos, which are fantastic. But So, you know, there's no reason why you couldn't make those for Instagram as well. So I'm not anyway. on Instagram and have no plans to be on Instagram, no. but no. thank you. I'll <laughs> stick with my old people on Facebook. Okay, so that's the thing that got me going this morning, a little bit of new technology to play with, especially as it's yeah. all about repurposing what I'm already producing. So that's great because it means yeah. no extra work for me. Well, that, so, that, that, that is a boon. Since you already produce so much in video, that yeah. you can repurpose it for Instagram. That's great. Yes, it is. So let's talk about blogging. In yeah, focus, focus of the week. What's yeah. the point of blogging anymore is my, is my slightly despairing question because I, um, I subscribe to all of my current clients feedly, you know, in Feedly to their blog. Nobody blogs. Now, I, funnily enough, two have blogged this morning and I always go into my Feedly and see who's blogged and usually it's only me. Um, but this week, two clients did. One was an astrologer about the solstice, of course, because it's the 21st. And um, another person who I've forgotten already, but it was a nice, oh yes, and a writer. And of course, writers still blog a bit because it's a way of expressing yourself in writing. But it, it, I think uh, in the olden days, two or three years ago, I would have gone and ticked them all off and said, look, why is there nothing in my Feedly? And last week or the week before, when I said to you, what's the point of blogging in 2018? I didn't feel I could tick them off because I, I felt that I'd lost touch with what's the point of blogging in 2018. So you're going to talk to us a bit about this, I think, aren't you? Well, what I did was I went and I looked. I thought about all the, I thought, first of all, I thought about all your clients and I thought they are, right, I, I'm, hmm. okay, so, so here's the thing, right? I thought about all the most successful people I know and I went and looked at their blogs and they're all blogging still. They're just not necessarily blogging in words in, initially, which is what blogging used to be. It used to be writing, didn't it? Yeah. But all of the most incredible, successful people I know, like Gary Vaynerchuk, Bernadette Doyle, um, uh, Dan Knowlton at um, Thingy, what's it in Kent? Yeah. Um, Shah, Frank Kern, Kerwin Ray, um, everybody I can think of, they are all still blogging. What they're not doing is producing writing first. What they're all doing is producing video first and then spinning it off into audio and words. Um, for, for example, James Shrampko, you can go to his blog post and you can download a PDF copy of that blog post, even if it was originally created in video or audio. Mm. And people do that. They go and download the PDFs of blog posts, even though the actual writing part of it is down below the audio and video part of it. So you can read it on his blog and you can download it. And he says that's the biggest driver of, of people signing up to his mailing list is people opting in to get the PDF copy of that blog post. I don't know how he's doing that technologically because it sounds incredibly complicated to me for, just from a, a techie point of view. But, but the point is people still love to read and save information even if they never look at it again or act on it, which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, the search engines, I mean, the main reason why you should be blogging in 2018 is because of the search engines. They absolutely love it still. And that is how you get organic traffic. Now, the people who I looked at who I know are really, really, really active on pay-per-click um, are not blogging so much because they know they can buy traffic. But if you can't afford to buy traffic, the only way to get traffic in 2018 is to produce content on social media that links back to your website or to blog in words on your on your website and they're not they they could be the same they're not mutually exclusive no not at all yeah no, yeah. no. i mean in, you know in fact you do you do written word blogging really really well because you do it on your website you do it in your newsletter and you do slightly different formats on each and you do um, notes on your page on facebook you make it very easy for people to consume your message in whichever way they want to and and even you know even now you're you're doing you know you do videos, which mean, which means it grabs people's attention and and again brings them to your website or brings them to your Facebook page. I'm so only it, doing our vi videos for our podcast yeah, at the moment. Yeah. I'm feeling um, I'm feeling very beleaguered and burdened in the same way that you described when James said do more because it is a, a, a superhuman. It feels sometimes like a superhuman feat to be 
creating and disseminating content. I love it. I mean, I'm having a bit of a moan about it in tomorrow's newsletter. I do love it in the main. And the lady that I spoke to this morning that I was finishing up with, she said, you know, I, every Friday I look for your newsletter and I also go looking for the podcast as well. And to know, and she's, and she's, I know that, I mean, she made comment to me about, uh, she's in publishing. So she commented to me about somebody had said to her, mentioned the Curtis Brown thing that you mentioned last week yeah. so there were coincidences that she was but she's never ever said to me until today which was our last session how much she loved the newsletter and the podcast um, and there are so which reminds me about the silent lurkers and the silent consumers um, and, and silent referrers because yeah in- yes in- silent referrers good point yeah it, it, yes I suppose what we're looking for is encouragement encouragement to create content where and wherever you do it. So for instance, one of my clients, the only thing that turns up on Feedly, and it isn't a problem because it's the same, it achieves the same ends, is the weekly um, blog post she creates around her weekly podcast, which I then share on to Twitter. And, I'm, and actually, if I see it on Facebook, I share it there as well. But the point is, it's what you said. It's audio first and a blog post next, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, and you just, you just, in, in that little paragraph of talking, you just said two main reasons why, in fact, three main reasons why people need to do something on their blog. They need to go, because it gave you a, something easy to share, which you did immediately. It met, brought her to your attention because she turned up in your feed. Yeah. And it, and it gives... And it gives her a social media presence or a presence on the internet that she wouldn't have had if she hadn't produced that podcast and then turned it into words. Where do people think their traffic and customers are going to come from if they're not doing something that brings them to the attention of Google or brings them to the attention of their customers on social media? I I, 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 I believe that I can help a client find a route to market through one of these channels used properly and consistently (laughs) however when they're not doing it on mass it's because they've lost heart or they've lost focus or they're thinking what's the point they don't believe it's going to work to bring them customers possibly and they've given up now the, the main the main challenge here of course is that everyone's trying to do it all themselves whereas you you know i feel oh my god i have to do more and I'm not actually doing all the dissemination. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. actually paying other people to do that yeah. for me because, yeah. quite, quite frankly, Judy, it would never get done if I did if I did it because it, I, you know, I find it. I look after my own Instagram account, and I fall behind very quickly on that. Yes. If, I, you yes. know, if I don't really pay that some attention every week. Yes, that's I mean, why I think it's better if the listener can, in, if they're doing it themselves, if they can just pick one thing and do that it. they will do consistently yeah. at, at, that they and, and and the lady this morning reminded me she said I keep thinking of what you always say which is um buy as you sell as you buy so you know I go looking for your newsletter so I've got to create a newsletter because I like to consume newsletters do you, do you know what I'm saying it's like yeah. pick the one that you love on the customer end and and see if that's something you'd like to create on the selling end yeah, and only last week I said to you, I haven't had your newsletter for a couple of weeks, and we found out that yeah. I actually had had it the week before, but I'd forgotten. But my, I, I, I see you on social media all the time. I consume your newsletter. I read your blog posts. I read the things you put on social media. I speak to you every week for an hour, and I still I want more, which means that if I was looking for a coach, who would I be choosing? It would be one of the people who are, who are visible to me, and you're the most visible to me, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but th- there's a slight difference there. I'm writing down visibility because I think that's important. But there's a slight difference there, which is that we have a mutual interest in each other's lives and work and have had going back for, I don't know, 15 years but or something. If I, didn't, if I didn't know you, I would know who you are. I would know what you stand for. I would know what, you're, what you offer. I would know what your clients get out of working for you. But, from you because because you you put it everywhere it's in the newsletter it's in it's on social media well now here's my next question then and and you're the wrong person to ask (laughs) because I know your answer already do you think for the ordinary consumer of it not you who is social media focused and centric do you think the ordinary consumer thinks it's too much no because the ordinary consumer is not seeing all of it 
they're seeing probably either okay. just the newsletter, which only goes out once a week. I mean, I, I actually think that, you know, perhaps yeah. when you share other things, you might want to send a little very quick email just saying, I've just put this up. You might. I have it. thought about that. I have thought about that in the past. Marion trying to encourage me to do that on Tuesday as well. It, it felt spammy to me to be honest and actually once a week for a newsletter I think is often enough yes if I was seeking well it's interesting because the lady this morning and you you are never going to become a paying client of mine and she's just finishing becoming a paying paying client of mine so what is the value of you and her both enjoying my newsletter to me and my business because it reminds me when I come across someone who needs your help that you're still out there doing what you're doing and it, it reminds me that you're there still. Because otherwise, you know, what they say, out of sight, out of mind. If I didn't see your stuff and get your newsletter and know that you were still out there doing what you were doing, I might think you'd retired by now. Yes. <laughs> and also, you know... Some, some days it feels like <laughs> that would be great. Um, yeah, I mean, you're not... You, I love blogging. I mean, I love the whole word of it. I love the concept of it. You know, I love teaching people how to do it, blah, 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 blah. But, uh, and I'm aware, funnily enough, and this is perfect, that the lady this morning was in publishing and lots of my clients are writers. So, of course, it makes perfect sense that they love to be communicated with in, in the written word. Uh, and I love that connection with them as well, because I I'm a written nothing. word snob. I write nothing. You are. I write nothing you are. nowadays. I you write, write nothing. nothing, yeah. On my blog, I write nothing on my social media. I... It's a shame, Nicholas, slightly. Let me tell you why. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting you change your strategy. Just let me tell you why that is strange, because you have published a lot of books, and you were very proud when you did that, CSE and all of that thing. So um, is that another skill? It's a bit like me. My handwriting has gone to hell in the handbasket. I can't even really sign my own name anymore. Is that because you know, the easiest way for you to create content is to start with videoing something. The easiest way for me to write something is pull my keyboard towards me. Are we losing skills of value or, or, or doesn't oh, it matter? Okay, so I think, I think here's the thing, right? I, I like compiling information and I like writing in a very colloquial way. I haven't done massively well with my books apart from as a marketing exercise. And in fact, if you go and look at some of my reviews, they say, you know, there's a lot of, there's a, quote, grammatical errors, because they didn't have Grammarly around. And also, I do write in a colloquial way. Mm. I don't like, I'm, I'm putting all my writing energy, all my expressing my energy into trying to write a novel and writing poetry now. Yes, yes. What I don't want to have to do is write craft blog posts that are hidden sales messages. Yes. I was never very good at that. I was only ever good at writing. Well, I should say I don't do that. No, and I, I don't think my clients want to do that no. either. No, so, so... I think it's much more important then to be able to just communicate in the way that you feel is authentic and enjoyable. And for me, that's video. But then I can spin off the words as if I get it transcribed and, then, and yes. you, know, you do that. Let's yes. just have a few, a few more reasons why you need a blog as such because you can blog on any other platform. But I just want to bring it back to the thing of having your home on the internet and yep. why you should bring people back to that. Yep. Because it's a very useful place, apart from anything else, to host things. So, for example, to make thank you pages after you set up a, a, a buy now button in PayPal, you need a thank you page. Um, it's a very useful place to host PDF downloads if you're not going to get too many downloads at a time. It's a very useful place to be able to host images. You can just upload it to your media thing in, in your blog and take the URL and then you can use that all over the shop. The main th and the other thing is that if you're going to run paid traffic, if you're sending people to a proper website, your advertising costs are going to be cheaper than if you send it to a third party platform. Yes. So that's why, yes, apart from everything else. And having a, a the, the the hub of your cartwheel. That's how I think of it. Social media are the spokes. People move around the outside and dip in and out, but you've always got to have a home hub online. Otherwise, you know, you're not really um, you're you're building your business on sand, I believe, unless you've got something that you control and you host that you can bring people to. So why why wouldn't you want a blog, uh, i.e., a WordPress website? Because it's a tech learning curve too far for a lot of people and in fact I've got a client who's struggling now but you you know why are you trying to do this stuff yourself nowadays there are so many people on um, I know up, and good people and very affordable as yeah well. very affordable and, yeah. and really grateful for the for the earnings yes and, you know and and you've just got to find someone on Upwork um what used to be called Elance 
and you'll probably get a beautiful blog set up for something, you know, under $100. Why are you spending months and weeks trying to make it work yourself? Now, the, so that's the other reason why not, because there's, there's only one thing worse than not having a blog, and that's having a really old-fashioned, clunky uh, one that doesn't look beautiful, you know. And, and nowadays, with there's so many beautiful themes. Um, I said to this lady the other day, why is your website looking like it's come out in the 1990s? Because, you know, if you're on WordPress.com, there are so many beautiful themes that you could be using. And all you need to do is choose the theme you want to use and then go on Upwork and say, I want, I want my website set up using this theme, you know, who, who's going to bid to do it? And they'll bid, you know, they don't bid high, they bid low to do it. <laughs> so, yeah, that, those are sort of the, the main notes I've made. I do feel very strongly that you do need a presence online and, and one you control because everybody, you know, started whinging about Facebook page reach going down i mean imagine if you'd spent if you have millions and millions of page likes and you spent all your time funneling them off of facebook onto your mailing list okay so so let me let me just recap if i may Hmm. um a blog doesn't need to begin with the words it can be the transcription of something you've previously created in video or audio or indeed it can it can just be a few words around a link an embedded link to a video or an audio yeah, I would recommend at least a paragraph or two of text. Yes, yes. Even if, you know, even if it's just describing what your podcast episode's about or describing. That's why show notes are, are, are very good for search engines. Because yes. Because they naturally have a lot of very um, highly yeah. relevant keywords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and so um, it, it doesn't need to, people don't need to think of it as, oh, I've got to write good sentences or anything. It's, no. it's, it's content, which still the movers and shakers are publishing regularly on their own website, which as Nick yeah. has just described is the hub online. But it's, um, it's your only way of bringing traffic to your website for free. Yes. It's Google. And, you know, even if you're going to, put stuff on YouTube, for example, like put videos on YouTube. You still want them to come somewhere. You still want to come somewhere because you yeah. can't sell in a YouTube. Well, display. this is what I'm thinking, that people perhaps have been um, seduced by social media. Yes. Because do you remember for ages I was saying, well, and people, nobody comes to my website anymore. They just buy me straight from Facebook. Perhaps people are thinking I don't need to bother so much to bring traffic to my website. They've, may- they've maybe been over become over reliant on social media or over focused on social media whereas it needs to be more balanced than that perhaps what if one of those platforms changes their changes their terms and conditions tomorrow you're screwed yeah whereas if you had to you know if you had a a website in the middle of a you know hub of all your social media activities well i think they've got those they've just forgotten about the importance of bringing of the 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 importance and the different choices of bringing people to them perhaps And and don't underestimate that people go and check out your website before they perhaps talk to you on social media it's it's i would be very suspicious of buying a high ticket item particularly from someone who didn't have a proper website with a privacy policy and an address and a contact form you know because you you can be very ephemeral on social media and and you know people have sold stuff and then slipped away and nobody's ever had anywhere to to you know you've got to have i think it's a respectable business move to have a proper website okay that you blog on otherwise you've got to pay for, you've got to do paperclip yes that those are your choices you either pay for traffic or you work for it and can you explain the thing please that i find quite hard to explain but insist that you know your blog isn't separate but that it's integral yes i mean people think of a blog as being um you know uh, uh, it is just a website with one part one page of it that has dynamically changing content so for example most of your website won't change all the you know your about page your books page whatever none of that changes unless i change it you know have a, a fit and add something or take something you know change it whatever but the one thing that's always dynamically changing is is the blog part of it and that's because it's pulling in new blog posts now this is what gets the search engines excited they do not get excited about one website you know this has been the same since 19 early 90 2000 sorry when blogging first came in and we realized that the search engines reward constantly updated relevant content they are still rewarding constantly updated relevant yeah. content yeah and they they're actually nowadays giving um even more weight to recently updated content so i've got two or three pillar posts on my website and that's another thing you can still by writing very comprehensive posts of four thousand words or more on around your key phrase you want to target make it a two or three word phrase or even better a four word phrase now you know you can really 
slam into num- page one of Google with a really good, well-crafted blog post, especially if it's multimedia, if it's got audio and it's got links out and it's got resources and it's got a PDF download and it's got a video embedded in it, you know, you're very likely to be able to dominate Google for your long tail key phrase if you've got it on a blog because you get rewarded for, for recently updated content. Mm. I, I re- regularly go and update my two or three pillar posts that bring me the most amount. And these days, um, WordPress lets you click a box calling it pillar content or yeah, something does. like that, yeah, doesn't it? it? Does. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. It, you can you can actually say which of your blog posts are most indicative of what your website's about. So, in short, Nicola, we're still fans of blogging. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it was funny because I, I thought, you know, we have had these conversations where we thought you can actually get a business up and running without it. But I've never... Well, you can get a business up and running without it. Yeah. But yeah. what we're saying is you, we want you to fill in these gaps behind the scene for various different reasons. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, not least because of the authenticity of your business and respectability of it. Because hmm. snake oil salesmen wouldn't have a proper website that they bothered to maintain, would they? <laughs> it's odd isn't it because i i don't snake oil salesmen don't really appear in my world anymore do you know what i mean they they did but um i don't think they do anymore no. it's odd i just think if there's anything else we've missed um the other thing is uh obviously it needs to be fast it needs to load fast on mobile so um you need to make sure the other i always tell my my customers my clients to go and do a a mobile race around their own website clicking links randomly you know just and the other day I realized that the mobile experience on one of my websites wasn't as good as it could be. It's got to load quick and it's got, it's got to make sense and it's got to make a uh, load. So you need a mobile friendly theme and you need good hosting because if it takes too long to c- click a link off of Facebook or YouTube onto your website, people are not going to bother. They're just going to click back. Yeah. So make sure it loads fast. And the other final thing of course is to make sure it's got a security certificate which again, you can get for free from your hosting. They will help you install it. And um, it's important now because Google's giving more weight to uh, websites that are HTTPS rather than just HTTP. Yes. It's a con, but yes. I know. One can rail against it being a con or one can actually just get on with it. <laughs> yeah, I, got on, I got on with it last year. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Just, it's, it's a con. But, you know, think of it as your hub online, your home online, your shop window online. That's what it is, because that's where people will come to buy. They might talk to you on Facebook and things, but it makes it easier if you've got somewhere where they can check you out. Okay, good. Right, good. And so what's the point of Blogging 28 to bring people for free to your hub online? Yes, and even if you're paying for traffic, it's it's better to bring them to somewhere that you can... Yeah, but we're getting off the point. You yeah. said, I, I take your point exactly yeah. about websites and why we've got to have one, blah, blah, blah. But the focus of the week is what's the point in blogging? In actually because blogging. it's a free traffic generation medium that's still important. If you do it well. And, you know, it's yeah. absolutely easy to do it. It's only you know, five things to remember. Write your blog post or, or create your content and turn it into a blog post. And then think to yourself, what main one main key phrase is this blog post about and if you can make it a three or four word um phrase it, all the better i'd go for three if i were you try and get it in the title of your blog post the first line of your blog post the last paragraph of your blog post and the tags of your blog post and you'll very likely alert google that that's what your blog post is about Word of the week. Now you give me yours. Treacle, because it's felt like I've been wading through it this week. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, and mine is thinking. I had a day off yesterday. I went to a destination, Starbies. It, it fueled my fire a bit too. Um, I, so I made a space for a day off to think. Oh, very nice. I'm, I'm rapidly coming around to having this more thinking time business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> it's snuck up on you since you became a meditator it has hasn't it yes <laughs> right uh, project updates then 
Yes, one of the things that I did in my thinking day was I thought about my will. Uh, no plans to die, but your net worth doesn't half clarify your focus. So a little bit of running the numbers, keeping score, as that wretched man Trump used to call it, and planning for the future of my life working or not. So my will was my project update. I haven't updated my will yet, but I've updated my thinking about it with an intention of, of, of tidying up loose ends. Yes. Gosh, there's nothing. Yeah, well, I've been thinking about that a lot on and on, on and off since Steve died. Don't mm. mind quite wonderfully. So I've my Alexa skills. Do you want to know in a yes. week what, yes. what, what's, what's happened? Well, the thing about the Alexa skills is it's not just on Alexa skills. It's it's like a mini podcast, if you like. Yes. Hang on, just a second. Just slow down and breathe a bit because you're talking to us this week at the speed of a speeding <laughs> speeding thing. Really? Alexa skills. Breathe, slow down and tell us slowly about Alexa skills. Right. Well, if you go onto Amazon UK and search Nicola Cairncross, one of the things that will come up apart from my books is my Alexa skills, which Sarah has rather brilliantly got on, on for me. And you can now talk into your smart speaker and you can ask for your clicks and leads daily briefing and hopefully it will find it because it's on Alexa. And but the thing that it's also on is every other podcast platform and it feeds out onto social media because Libsyn is good like that. And it also feeds automatically onto YouTube. So effectively, I've got another podcast that's what one to one and a half minutes long each day. And I never thought anyone would listen to anything that short, but apparently people like it because in one week I've had 173 listens to 10 skills, which is quite astonishing, really. <laughs> Because yeah. the only thing I've done is promote it to my, my list. Hmm. So that's an interesting thing. So I'll keep you up to date with that. And okay. um, the other thing I've done this week is I've, I'm running an experiment because I wanted to go back to basics and see if I could, you know, I put my Be Everywhere Online tuition into my membership. And yes. the only way to get at it was to join the membership. Yeah. I, I had a little brain fart this week and thought, I wonder what would happen if I put it back on to you can buy it or you can join the membership to get enhanced support. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm just running that for a month to see what happens with that. Because yeah. I like selling things, Judith. I like yes. regularly yes. selling things. And yes. selling a membership is a lot harder than selling a product. Yeah. So I thought I'd just go back to selling a product. Is that true or is it a belief? No, it's it's true. People are very reluctant to sign up to a... Yeah, do you remember Sue O'Kell always told us that? They liked it to be a continuity programme with a beginning, a middle and an end, not a, not a forever. That's right. Yeah. And you know, on that topic, uh, no matter what I do, I cannot get my Clicks and Leads Academy one-year membership accepted by Facebook. It seems like somehow they know that I've made, I've made a special page for Facebook. I've made a special product. You in, mean in the shop? Yes, I, yeah. they won't accept it at all. Okay. And it's really annoying because you've got one. Is it something about the word clicks oh. and leads? Possibly. Um, uh, yeah. Possibly. Yeah, they just won't. I mean, they'll accept my Alexa skill. They'll accept my books, all except the money gym, of course. Um, yeah. but they won't accept a one. I think it might be the names because my, mine are, are called Small Business Big Magic and Club 100. They don't sound yeah. like internet marketing related or yeah. money related things. Possibly. It might be that. Yeah. Anyway, but I've got everything else onto it, so I'm okay. Thinking, you know, that's that's good. Right. So, who or what's impressed then? Well, I was going to tell you um, about the staircase on Netflix. Have you watched that? No. It's a true crime, um, and I was going to tell you about the fortitude of the French film director who followed a, a real life author who may or may not have bumped off his wife by pushing her down the stairs in 2001 and uh, it, he made some episodes between 2001 and 2008 and then he made some more episodes uh, in something like I don't know a few years later and then this year some more episodes because it's a long story that's dominated their lives but it's a true story and you don't know whether the man did it or not I was going to tell you about that but I'm not going to tell you about that now because I found something better um, because I spend, as that's how I knew about IGTV, I spend a goodly amount of time every day on the three or four news apps, including the BBC. And this makes me very dark at times. So when I see good news, I'm very excited by it. And this week I saw the story of um, a renowned Spanish-American chef 
with two, 29 restaurants and two Michelin stars. He's a pioneer of tapas in the US and his name is Jose Andres. Um, and when Hurricane Maria struck in Puerto Rico in 2017, Jose took his culinary skills down there to the Hungary where there were 3.5 million people in need of feeding. And he describes himself as amazed at how slowly aid was moving through the American government and through the aid agencies. And he says, you know, when people are hungry, they need to be fed right now. On his first day, they made a thousand meals and he had 20 friends helping with him. By the time they'd finished, they were up to 150,000 meals a day. Oh, my God. And he needed 20,000 volunteers to help him do that. And the project took food deliveries to more than 700 places every day, including children and the elderly. And he made the impossible possible. So they needed bread. So instead, what the aid agencies and the government were doing was shipping it from America. So, well, what we need to do is reactivate the local bakers with the supplies they need. And what they need is fuel and diesel rather than waiting for bread to come from America. So, you know, what made them different was the difference was that they had this willingness to help and make it happen. He says, you know, there's a very nice video that you'll like. He says, I want to be rich. I want to be a good businessman, a chef with accolades, but I will never say I've been successful if others cannot share their dreams to the same dream that I hold to provide for my daughters. Oh my God. I mean, I honestly, I nearly lost it when I was watching this film. He's got a thing called the World Central Kitchen Project, and he managed to feed more people than any government or aid agency by mobilizing thousands of people across the island. And, uh, Jose Andres, he's the BBC have given him the Food Chain 2018's Global Food Champion Award. Hurrah for happy stories on the news apps, that's all I can say, because just one story like that can wipe out all the misery and darkness of, of children being separated from their parents and put into pens and things, you know? It, it just, yeah, yeah. It just, know. it just, well, it cheered me up. You, you even bother with the news. It, I, I, Nicola, I can't stop it. I, I have a strong, I, I, have that argument with myself every day it is a terrible addiction and I had come off it completely in the decade when I didn't have a television but I have to know at the moment the stage I'm in in my life because of the things that are going on in the world and in my life I have to know what is happening because I may need to become a Jose Andres I may need to step up either to save myself or other people oh okay well, interestingly, the thing that's impressed me th this week is, well, it's, it's two things, actually. One, I'm, 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 as you were talking, can you, I'm going to share the links about where to watch that. that yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know why I love TV. I love it. And I especially love really good, good time TV, good feeling TV. So we've been watching Escape to the Chateau, DIY. Did you ever watch Escape to the Chateau, Mark One? No. We, we had conversations about it because I told you that it was the, the vintage lady and her um, her army husband who had bought a chateau and they were doing it up themselves. And I happened to know the vintage lady because one of Kim's daughters worked for her. So anyway, it's, it was a fascinating program. They bought a big chateau. They did it up. He was, you'd love him. He's a mechanic. He used to be in the army. He's very, um, very is, this in, is this in France, the chateau? Yes, yes yep. it is. And it's gorgeous, and they've done it really well. Well, now they've got um, Escape to the Chateau DIY, where they're now mentoring other people who want to buy chateaus. Oh. So they're mentoring them from the purchase point, or they're going to save them if their chateaus are not making enough money to, to survive and things like that. It's absolutely gripping television. Okay. And, and very good, very enjoyable. It's on Channel 4, and I highly recommend it because it's... Oh, I have a client who will love that because she yeah. lives in France and in the world of chateaus, so I yeah. think uh, that's a good tip. Yeah. Thanks. And, and lots and lots of really good business tips coming out of it as well, you know, how to save money. So well, you, it's what you learn when you do it, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Mm. But the other one um, just occurred to me you might enjoy is Million Dollar Menu. Have you come across that? I've seen I, it on Netflix, I yeah. think. Well, exactly. And it's Fred from First Dates Hotel and First Dates Restaurant, who obviously used to be the sommelier for one of... Oh, no, I've seen it on BBC One, haven't I? Yeah. yeah he, he was a very, very top-level sommelier for one of the... Uh, and restaurant manager for um, one of the Rue brothers. And I came across him when I watched that programme where they took um, 20 kids from, you know, unemployment benefit to running their own, you know, to, to being different roles in restaurants. And that was really worth watching. Wasn't as well. that Jamie's 15 or was that another one? No, that was another one. There okay. were, this was one about, um, 
I can't remember who, oh, what was it called? Anyway, if any of the listeners remember what it was called, then do share because it was a great thing. They took about 20 kids from the, the Dole and they put them into different situations in the restaurant environment. And some of them became sommeliers, some of them became head waiters, some of them became, you know, in the kitchen. And then they ended up working, you know, putting a restaurant together in France for what the, one of the Rue brothers. And anyway, it's a great series. But Fred really came to everyone's attention then, and he's gone on to do the whole first dates thing, which he's brilliant at. But he's still very much ensconced in the restaurant trade. And he has got this program now called Million Dollar Menu, where they're bringing basically loads of people who've got restaurant ideas together, putting them into pop-up restaurants in Manchester, and then bringing in um, food and restaurant investors to give them feedback and tell them, you know, and to, and to see if they're going to get any investment. And Fred's running the whole thing. It's really good fun, really good um, a good watch. Yeah, I've seen it on iPlayer, actually. I haven't watched any yet, but I have yeah, seen it there. Like yeah. it, enjoy it. I think you'd enjoy it. So that's what we've been up to over here. It's all been about food and chateaus. Marvellous. Okay. Because <laughs> when, we, when we lived in England, we were saying this the other day, we used to watch um, Endless Escape to the Country Home and Away. So now we are away. We've got to find something else to watch. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be watching things about moving back to England. That wouldn't, <laughs> that wouldn't do at all. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> okay, that's us done then. All right, see you next week. Bye. Bye. How do they do it? Not a care and suffering. Want to step into the world? Who holds the key? You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It, Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com.